If you're looking for good news about the news, here's what I've got. Be grateful that Kathleen Carroll is running the largest, arguably most important global news organization in the world. <laughs> On any given day, more than half the world's population reads, hears, or watches stories from the Associated Press, an operation founded in 1846 and run by Kathleen for the last 14 years. On her watch, the challenges for journalism have been epic. Increased dangers for journalists, collapsing business models, an explosion of communications modes, and existential qu uh, questions about the very definition of journalism and who is qualified to make it. Throughout, the industry could not have conjured a steadier or wiser hand. She is my ideal of a journalistic leader, our friend Jim Amos, the longtime editor of the Times, Picayune in New Orleans, told me. Passionate in her pursuit of truth, fearless in calling out journalistic rubbish, endowed with extraordinary judgment and the ability to communicate it. And if you're lucky enough to bask in her friendship, he added, you know that she is loving, loyal, and hilarious, even in the most downcast of times. <clears throat> While remaking the AP for the digital age, Kathleen has also strengthened its core values overseeing reporting that has earned five Pulitzer Prizes on her watch, including journalism's highest honor, the Pulitzer Prize for Public Service. That award given to Kathleen and a team of her reporters this spring recognized work that embodies everything we have come to expect from her. Those stories headlined seafood from slaves, undertook an international investigation of the fishing industry in Southeast Asia, that freed more than 2,000 slaves and traced the seafood they caught to supermarkets and pet food providers across the US who, thanks to the AP, could no longer deny their prominence. This work alone distinguishes Kathleen and the company of Morris lecturers, but she has also been one of our strongest warriors against government challenges to press freedom and a clarion voice for security standards for journalists working in hostile environments. That last issue is personal. Nothing has weighed more heavily on Kathleen than the risks her reporters and photographers take to bring us the news, risks that have cost some of her international journalists their lives. We saw this up close at Neiman when Anya Niedringhaus, a brilliant Associated Press photographer and beloved Neiman fellow, was shot and killed while reporting on the 2014 elections in Afghanistan. I have never seen Kathleen so low and simultaneously more attentive to colleagues, friends, and family members whose grief over Anya she put above her own. Because of the nature of the Morris Lecture, we focus on international work. But it is important to stress that the AP is also a vital domestic resource and that along with pioneering new bureaus in North Korea, Myanmar and Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Kathleen has been an extraordinary partner to newsrooms at home. Joyce Deli, who oversaw 50 small and mid-sized newspapers around the country as vice president for Lee Enterprises, recalled a time that the editor of the small paper in Twin Falls, Idaho, emailed directly to Kathleen looking for photos in Afghanistan to illustrate a story tied to local Afghan refugees. Within hours, Kathleen had connected him to AP's Vice President for Photography, and the assignment was made. As the top editor of the largest global news organization, Kathleen could have stayed above the details of state and local coverage in the United States, Joyce told me, but she didn't. She personally knew editors of many small newspapers, just as well as those from the big shops, and she worked to stay in touch with their needs. Her commitment was strong and heartfelt. I like to think that that sensibility was forged in her first, on her first beat, covering Dallas cops in her native Texas. I know for sure it's the source of her delicious southern aphorisms, one for every occasion. 
I am not the only one in this room who has been steeled for hard work by hearing Kathleen tell me to pull up my big girl pants <laughs> or heard an incompetent described as unable to find his fanny with a flashlight <laughs> or encouraged to bring in reinforcements by being reminded of the wisdom of wearing both a belt and suspenders. On behalf of all of us at Neiman, I also want to sound a special note of gratitude to Kathleen for her extraordinarily generous backing of superb AP Neiman Fellows, Exhibit A being this year's Felicia Fonseca. I have read thousands of letters of recommendation for Neiman applicants and can confidently say that no one is consistently more precise, persuasive, or passionate about her people than Kathleen. A remarkable trait in any manager, but especially so when that manager is overseeing journalists in 260 locations across 106 countries. Kathleen's decision to leave the AP after this year was met as sad news from the AP often is. If AP were a sports team, said CEO Gary Pruitt, we would be retiring her number. But the recent announcement that she'll be succeeded by her Washington bureau chief, Sally Busby, has buoyed many who see in this decision an affirmation of the values that Kathleen has personified. On a personal note, I want to say how much Kathleen's friendship and leadership have meant to my own work. I found a recent email where she called us work sisters and wondered, uh, and she wondered whether Skip Gates might discover that our DNA made us cousins. I suspect so. <laughs> I was visited once by a Japanese writer researching a book on prominent women journalists. Her English was good, though not perfect, and at the end of the interview, she asked me if I might recommend other prominent women editors to speak with. Do you, she inquired, know any other large ladies? <laughs> I did, and was later inspired to arrange a small dinner of those few women editors of big papers, an annual gathering that came to be known naturally as the Large Ladies' Dinner. <laughs> Today, there are fewer women heading our biggest news organizations than there were then, but it has remained a special point of pride and inspiration that the largest was run by Kathleen, a journalist and leader for our times. Please join me in welcoming this extraordinary journalist, a lover of dogs, a connoisseur of good pens, a gardener, a jigsaw puzzler, a most excellent companion on aimless New York walks, and my friend, Kathleen Carroll.